What's the next best thing to do when you're installing an electric vehicle charging point and you can't use the house consumer unit and where it's located you can't position a secondary one? Let me show you. So this is one of those installations where the consumer unit has been boxed in in a kitchen cupboard. Now this consumer unit anyway is an old consumer unit. There's no spare ways. It's got a type AC RCD in it. I wouldn't be prepared to use it. I like to put a secondary consumer unit in if I can. There's no space in here to put a secondary one in. Also, I need to be able to get to the meter tails. They're underrated in 16 mil. They're also in the cavity of the wall. I can't get to them. So I'm gonna take you outside and show you what we're gonna do. So what I'm gonna do is install an IP65 rated consumer unit above this meter box. It's going above it because there's no room either side, unfortunately, but I'm gonna dress it the best I possibly can. Now when you're installing these IP rated consumer units, sometimes it's nice to put it within an enclosure but today I can't do that because there's just not enough room and I'll show you what I mean. So that's where the gate falls, where it's open and there simply isn't the depth there to put another enclosure. Today I'm gonna to be installing this Whisker IP65 rated consumer unit and as you can see, there's just enough room for it behind this gate. So what I'm gonna do is install some 25 mil Copex from this consumer unit into the bottom of the meter cupboard. I'm not going into the top because the ingress protection will be far better if it goes in the bottom. I don't wanna risk any water tracking down the Copex into this meter box. Tip of the day, when you're feeding these cables through this copex, make sure you have the copex loose, otherwise you're never gonna get these cables down that copex and around that bend.
While I'm working today, I thought I would run you through some facts about the Peugeot E208, which is the car that my clients have purchased. So the E208 has a 50 kilowatt battery on it and a maximum range of 225 miles on a full charge. Now there are factors which will reduce this, including temperatures, the way you drive, road conditions, how much weight's in the vehicle, all these things contribute. Now if my client charged their vehicle off a 13 amp socket, it would take about 24 hours to get a full charge. Whereas on the seven kilowatt fast charger that I'm installing today, it will take about seven hours. The E208 has a type two connector and a CCS connector, which means it's capable of charging on a rapid charger. Now this car has a maximum charge rate of 101 kilowatts, which means that from 20% battery up to 80%, it will charge in 30 minutes. Something else you might find interesting is that the car warranty is actually separate from the battery warranty. So with the Peugeot, it comes with a three year warranty and the batteries come with an eight year warranty or up to 100,000 miles. It goes from zero to 60 in 8.1 seconds and has a top speed of 93 miles an hour. If you're not sure what a Type 2 and a CCS connector looks like, I'll leave a picture here for you. I haven't got an awful lot of room, but I'll try and show you what I've done so far. So here we have the new consumer unit with the surge, the main switch and an MCB for the Zappi. We have the EV Ultra cable here, ready to go, ready for testing. Then we have Copex coming out at the bottom. Hopefully you'll be able to see that Copex coming down there. If I zoom in, you will see that the Copex gets glanded off there. Now what I've done there is I've put a box lid in with a 25 mil hole and glanded the Copex off so it's nice and secure. Inside the meter box, we now have a new Henley block my meter tails and a cat five ready to join my CT onto the tails here and a new earth block. Now what's my honest opinion on the E208? Well it ticks an awful lot of boxes for an electric car. It's got a decent mile range. I know it's not as good as Tesla, but generally 200 odd miles is pretty good. You can charge it on a rapid charger. So you know that if you can find a rapid charger, which more and more are available these days, you know it's just gonna take 30 minutes to top it up to 80%, which is enough time just to pop in, get a cup of coffee, and then before you know it, you'll be ready to go again. Now as an everyday car, I think the E208 is a great place to start. I think they've set a good standard for other manufacturers to follow. So I've got the Zappi mounted, I've got my ends all crimped up. I'm gonna get on with dead testing, connect up the other end, do my live testing, and then put this all together and commission a unit. So this has turned out to be quite a nice little job in the end. The problem I faced at the beginning was the consumer unit is on the other side of this wall, up high in a cupboard. There's no spare ways, it's an old board. There's not even space to increase the size and change it. The meter's on the outside of the wall and the meter tail's got the cavity. The meter tails are only 16 mil. And as you well know, if you're trying to change those tails through the cavity, it can go horribly wrong. 
So if I can, in these circumstances, I like to leave the existing installation so that it has no bearing on me and start mine from scratch. So I'll show you exactly what I've done now. Here we have the new little IP65 rated consumer unit. Inside we've got the surge, the main switch and the MCB for the charger. It's a nice little unit to be honest, it's going to do the job alright. Also I am in like a corridor and there's a gate just behind me so this area is pretty well shielded from any elements anyway. Now outside of the consumer unit I ran some 25mm copex fixed to the wall as you can see. I only had a really narrow gap so but it's worked out quite nice, it looks quite tidy. And now in the meter box, now it's getting a little bit busy in here. We have a copex which loops down into the bottom. My meter tells into a new Henley block, new earth block. We have the CT here. Now this CT I've positioned on the meter tails out of the meter before the Henley block. So it's picking up everything. I have a CT joint box here as well in this whisker box, which I've just fixed in here. So that's solid. And that's it, a nice little tidy job. Now again, because I've had limited room to work here, I've had to take my EV Ultra cable out the side of my consumer unit and I've clipped it with linear clips down this edge here and underneath the gate. The cable then continues at low level, clipped around the property. Underneath the step discreetly and up to the charger. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up.